to understand uh, these strategic interaction and to know what happens in such scenario, we need to understand a concept called Nash equilibrium. What we have, so let us continue with the case when we had uh, two firms and they are indulged in price competition, but to keep our life simple what we assume that they can decide either the high price or the low price. So, let me write it one way and then you would see how convenient it is when we represent it like this. This is called game table and let us say here we have firm 1, here we have firm 2. Here let us say the firm can price its product high or here firm can price its products low and similar for firm 2. So, what it means, what this box means that what are the profits made by firm 1 and 2 when the both of them price their product high. So, in that case let us say hypothetically they both earn 15 units. Okay. What happens that when a firm prices its product high and the other firm prices its product low, the firm whose price is low would capture the whole market and the firm which has higher price would get nothing. So, 0 for the firm 1 and let us say 20 for the firm 2. You must have noticed that we are writing here two numbers. The first number indicates the profit made by firm 1 and the second number indicates the profit made by firm 2. So, in this box 0 is the profit of firm 1 and 20 is the profit of firm 2. Now, because this problem is symmetric here what happens the firm 1 makes 20 because its price is low and firm 2 makes 0 because its price is high. Now, if they both have the low prices, they split the market and they get 10 and 10 each. Now, what we need to figure out what is going to happen in this market. I suggest that you pause the video for a moment and think about that what should be the decision for these two firms in this particular scenario. Okay. So, let us try to solve it now. Firm 1 does not know what firm 2 is going to do. So, firm 1 can find, fig, think about you know can rationally uh, think about what firm 2 is going to do. So, let us look at this particular way of thinking that firm 1 thinks that firm 2 is going to price its product high. It means firm 2 is going for p h. So, if firm 2 is going for p h what should firm 1 do? because if firm 1 also goes for high then it is going to be 15 and if firm 1 should if firm 1 goes for low then the profit is going to be 20. 20 is of course, greater than 15. So, here firm 1 should go for the low price if firm 1 thinks that firm 2 is going for high price. So, here we will indicate this is the higher number. Okay this indication is just for our convenience. Similarly, if firm 1 thinks that firm 2 is going to price its product low, then what should it do? If it prices its product high, then it is going to be the profit is going to be 0, which is less than this 10. So, in this case also the firm 1 should price its product low. Now, from here firm 1 can conclude that no matter what is the pricing strategy of firm 2, it is better off by pricing its output at low price, because low always gives the higher profit. Similarly, what we can do that firm 2 would have a very similar logic and we would see that firm 2 is also better off by having low, low in no matter what firm 1 does, firm 2 would prefer to price its product low. Now, let us pay attention to this particular box. What is happening? That firm 1 is pricing its product low and firm 2 is also pricing its product low. Now, we have to think about can firm, if this is the scenario, 
can form 1 do better given what form 2 is doing. So, form 1 can if form 2 is playing P L then form 1 can either be in this box or can be in this box. Okay? Only these two boxes are feasible and which box gives the higher payoff to the form 1? This box gives which corresponds to P L for the form 1. So, form 1 does not have any incentive to change its behavior and same is true for the form 2. Form 2 can if form 1 is playing P L then form 2 can either be in this box or this box. Again this box is better for form 2 and therefore, none of the forms have any incentive to change their behavior. They would not like to change their behavior given what other form is doing. If you notice here in this box, if they both had played high, then both would have been better off. But the problem is that if one is playing high, then the other form has let us say if form 2 is playing high, then form 1 has incentive to play low and to deviate and make the higher profit. This is the only box in this game from which none of the players have any incentive to deviate. In other word what we can say what is happening these two forms are deciding independently they are not talking to each other that is also a possibility what if they talk to each other it is also possible they collude with each other and act like a monopolist that is a different then the market does not have a true oligopoly it has a monopoly. So, we are not talking about that scenario we are talking about the scenario in which both firms act independently and so it means that given what other firm is doing what is best for the form 1 to play P L and given what form 1 is doing what is the best for form 2 to do is to play P L. When players are playing their best response given what others are doing because a player does not have any control over what others are doing. So, this is called the best response from the players and if each player is playing their best response given what other players are doing, then we say the scenario a Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, in this case P L comma P L is the Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, this is the concept of Nash equilibrium. We will take help of this particular concept to figure out what happens in case of Kurno game, Bertrand game as well as in the Stackelberg game. Thank you.